you all it's Kylie. Thanks for tuning in. It's time for some announcements. Make sure to subscribe to our text messages for updates and information. Text at altered y to 81010. Make sure to like, follow, and share our social media pages because we want to get the good news out to our friends and family. Make sure to tune in to our social media pages tomorrow. We are starting a new challenge and you're not going to want to miss it. That's it for announcements. Now it's time for worship, followed by a message with Pastor Corey. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for this wonderful time and um, beautiful day. We ask that you uh, bless the nation and the world right now as we're going through a tough time and ask that you bless worship. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey guys, what is up? It is Pastor Corey here at Altered Student Ministries. Thank you so much for tuning in, especially if you are a first or a second time viewer. We are so happy uh, and, and honored that you have decided to tune in with us, man. I'm so thankful that you're here. Um, let's go ahead and jump into it. If you have your Bibles, hopefully you do. We're going to be in Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 6, going through verse 8. Just a real small portion of scripture. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start reading. It says, So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Wherever you are, can you pray with me really fast? Father God, we love you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. Uh, thank you for meeting us here today. Um, we know that we aren't in person, Father God, but, but we know that we're not separated spiritually. So we thank you for meeting us where we are. Uh, we ask that we receive something today, that we leave with a, with a better understanding of who you are. We love you and we praise you. And everybody said, Amen. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, this is, a, this is a neat little story. It's kind of a story that scarred my life forever. Um, if you've ever had an embarrassing story, then you can relate with me. Uh, this is me just opening up to you in honesty hour. When I was in fifth grade, I'll never forget it, I was in science class, and our teacher put us in groups of three. And I was really excited because my teacher, unbeknownst to him, he put me in a group with my crush. Like, I liked this, this girl. I'll take that back. I love this girl. Like, it was crazy. Like, I was head over heels for her. You know what I'm saying? So what I did out of my excitement is I went home, and I sat on my couch, and her name was Leanna, and I wrote, I love Leanna, at least a hundred times on this piece of paper. Uh, I colored all over it. I drew on it. Man, it was so corny and so cheesy, but I was in love. And I went back to school the next day, and I forgot to take that piece of paper out of my binder. And We were sitting in our groups, and, and Leanna was sitting across from me, and my buddy Nathan was sitting beside me. And Nathan was a wild one. He was kind of crazy. He was the, uh, the crazy guy out of the bunch. We were, we were working on this project and we were working in groups and I was talking to Leanna and Nathan was just hanging out and he, he leaned over and he's seen this piece of paper that was all colorful and drawn on and he's seen it and I guess it intrigued him and he wanted to know what it was so he pulled it out and he noticed that I had written, I love Leanna at least a hundred times on this piece of paper. Um, now what would have been really cool is if Nathan would have realized it and like, yo, I don't want to embarrass my boy, and he would have put it back in the binder. But Nathan wasn't that type of guy. Maybe you wouldn't have been that type of guy. Nathan took the paper and he began passing it all around the classroom. So everybody's reading the paper. I love Leanna. They're looking at me. They're reading it. They're looking at me, and then they crack up laughing and they pass it to the next person. I'm like, yo, like, what is happening? When is this gonna stop? It eventually makes its way all the way to the last person, Leanna herself. Your boy was like traumatized. Like red is an understatement. I look like a tomato. Like it was bad. I looked very sunburnt. It was horrible. I was about to cry. So I went home. I like tore up every note that I ever written about her. I was like, I'm done with love. I don't need it. The next day, we're in the lunchroom and some kids come up to me. Kids that aren't even in my classroom. And they're like, yo, I heard you like Leanna. You love her? You love Leanna? And I'm like, guys, shut up. No, no, I don't love her. What are you talking about? And everybody in my classroom was like, yeah, he does. We seen the note. We seen it, Corey. You wrote it on there 155 times. And I couldn't argue with them because everybody had witnessed it. They were all there. And when I was thinking about this story, it begs the question, are we the kind of witnesses of God that people know about him just because they came in contact with us? Are we so captivated and in love with the Lord that whenever people come in contact with us, they know more about Jesus just because they were hanging out with us. That's the type of Christian that I want to be. That's the type of witness that I want to be. So today, um, if you're taking notes, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes over the subject everywhere. Wherever you are, if you're taking notes, write down everywhere. Um, I, th I think there's, there's many types of ways to be a better witness for the Lord, but I think there's two essential things that I want to talk to you about that I think if we could follow these two simple ideas, it would help our witness to our friends, to our family, um, just 
increase tremendously. I think we would be better witnesses for them. Uh, so number one, if you're taking notes, just write, be kind. Be kind. Um, kindness, I believe, is not a season. I don't think kindness is an emotion. Kindness is a choice and kindness is a lifestyle. I think kindness is something that takes practice. I think kindness is something that has to be intentional. And I also think that there's not enough kindness going around in our world today. Um, I think kindness is a big part of our Christian faith. Uh, wherever you are, follow me to Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 22. It says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And there is no law against these things. Everywhere that we go as Christians, we have to be kind. It's a huge opportunity that we have is really what it is that, that we have the opportunity to make somebody's day and to show Jesus through our kindness. See, I love the way that Jesus demonstrated this in scripture because he was always looking for opportunities to help people, to heal people, and he was always working towards their need. And I think that if we're going to look anything like Jesus in 2020, we have to do the exact thing. We have to look for opportunities. We have to pray for opportunities to help people to serve people, to talk to people, to encourage people, and to empower people. That goes for our friends, and that goes for our family. If we look for opportunities to be kind, I promise you that there will be opportunities to be kind. Being kind is an opportunity that we have. Um, number two, the last one, number one was be kind. Number two is be inclusive. What do I mean when I say be inclusive? Invite people to hang out with you. Invite people into your group, into your circle that might not have a group or a circle. People that we consider outcasts or people that society uh, considers outcasts or that school considers outcasts, those are the people that, that we want to love on. You see, we all have equal value and equal worth in the eyes of God. So that means, since we have equal value and equal worth, that we should all be pushing and, and encouraging each other in our faith. We should all be taking necessary steps to encourage one another in our relationship with God. Um, I want you to go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. This is an incredible story. I love it. But I, you're going to hear the punchline uh, in, in the big finish at the end of this verse. It says, Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again, and he taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many other tax collectors and disreputable sinners. In parentheses, it says that there were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when, Jesus, or, but when the teachers of religious laws, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked Jesus' disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, and here's the, here's the big part, here's the big ending. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call those not who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners. Listen to me. Jesus was inclusive with people because he knew that he was everything that they would ever need and everything that they needed at that present time. And us as believers and us as, as Christians with the Holy Spirit living inside of us, can I tell you that that same thing applies to us? We have things that we can offer to the world. Hope, love, grace. These aren't just things that we receive. These are things that we have the opportunity to give out. People who the world marks out and counts out, those are people who Jesus does his ministry with. Remember that Jesus does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So wherever you are, wherever you're going, even in this, this, this time of isolation, whatever you're doing, just remember that as Christians, we are called to be kind and we're called to be inclusive. Don't exclude people because people are what Jesus is all about. He saved you. He saved me. And now through us, he has the opportunity to save others. I love it. And I love being able to tell you guys about this because this is a big witness that we have. So um, I love you guys. I can't wait to see you soon. Uh, wherever you are, spread the good news of Jesus to your friends and to your family. And uh, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We love you. We miss you. And we'll see you next week.